Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. This is episode five of our series on finding the aphelion, perihelion, and minimum of the uh, orbit of a planet around a star. Uh, the orbit around a star is very special in that there's this attractive term over here that's due to gravity and a repulsive term over here that's due to conservation of angular momentum. We've created a code that will find this minimum point here given a leftmost bound and a rightmost bound. It can find the minimum and then it can find, given the, uh, the total energy, it can find the closest point, the perihelion, and the farthest point, the aphelion. Uh, what we want to do now is I'd like to check to see uh, whether this code correctly predicts the results for Earth's orbit. Earth's is an orbit that is very near and dear to all our hearts. Uh, because if it ever changes, uh, we run the risk of running too close to the sun. So it's kind of something we want to keep an eye on. Um, not an eye on, I -E -Y, or not, not an I-O-N, E-Y-E -E space O-N, although we might do that using ions. So what I've done here is I've obtained the uh, information for the Earth in these natural units that we've used for the problems, where the uh, distances are measured in astronomical units. So that's the average distance from the Earth to the sun where time is measured in years, which is so many, uh, which is 31 million seconds. Somehow that number always seems so small to me, like a year only being 31 million seconds. That seems vanishingly small. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm, I'm waxing philosophical here. Um, uh, and then of course the masses are going to be measured in the earth mass. So the mass of the planet is going to be the mass of the earth. That is just a one. Duh, our earth mass is one earth mass. Uh, the sun, it turns out, is 333,000 times more massive than the sun. To calculate the angular momentum of the earth, not exactly a number that I keep on hand, it's the earth's mass times its average distance from the sun squared times 2 pi divided by its period, and that's, of course, one year. So this is actually a pretty simple calculation here. And then g, the universal gravitation constant, <clears throat> works out to uh, this number in units of Earth masses, AUs, and years. Uh, this is the more familiar uh, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 uh, in standard uh, SI units. And this is something I had to puzzle over for a couple days, which was how to find the, um, the energy of Earth's orbit. Again, not exactly something you can just look up. I was originally calculating it using either the aphelion or the perihelion, and I said, well, that's kind of cheating because we're trying to find that and we're using that to get it. Um, so I dug through uh, the, the textbook I used for my classical mechanics course, uh, Patrick Hamill's uh, Intermediate Dynamics, uh, which gives this great equation that relates the energy of a planet's orbit to its eccentricity. Eccentricity is just how much of an ellipse it makes compared to how much of a circle it makes. Or if you give it an eccentricity of one or greater, uh, it takes on a parabolic or hyperbolic orbit, and then the planet never returns. Um, be on the lookout. We'll do a. I'll do a playlist of episodes where we'll do a uh, an orbit animator. I still am saying we as if I'm not the only one here. My cat was running around earlier, so maybe she counts. Um, and so anyway, this is a great little formula that gives you the energy of something's orbit in terms of its eccentricity, masses and the angular momentum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all of this, this part right here, I'm gonna copy that and paste it into here. Okay, now I've got the energy defined below here. I don't think it, yeah, yeah, we're not using the energy anywhere else, so I'll just set the energy right there. Um, so the Earth answers should be an aphelion of 147 times 10 to the 9 meters, and a perihelion of 152 times 10 to the 9 meters. Now those are in meters, not in AUs. So what we're going to do at the end is convert those over. So I'll come back and get this number in just a minute. For right now, what I want to do is I want to think about my R min and R max. Uh, the Earth does not have a very eccentric orbit. An eccentricity of zero means a perfect circle. So we are, we're literally like 2% away from a perfect circle when it comes to our uh, when it comes to our orbit. Disclaimer, 2% uh, is not a linear figure there. Brian Lane is not claiming to have a percentage eccentricity formula. Please do not take it that way. But yeah, we're only, a, a, you know, we're a couple marks away from 
uh, uh, being in a perfect circle, which is kind of nice given that it means that we don't experience the huge drastic changes in temperature that, say, a comet does when it comes and swings around the Earth. So let's go with some safe bets here. Let's keep our R min and R max at, at half and two because our, our orbital distance does not cut in half and does not double. So that means in terms of this diagram, we are way over here and way over here in terms of these guesses. But the beautiful thing about the um, <clears throat> about this bracketing code is that if you double the, the, the distance between your your initial guesses, you're really only adding one more step to the loop. That's one of the beauties of this method here. Um, so let's see, so we've got our values here, we've got our energy. As promised, let's convert our answers into meters down below here. Uh, so let's see here, so perihelion, um, let's see, let's take the R there, multiply it by this. Let's take our R, Here's our A feeling. Let's take our R mid and multiply it by this. And then same thing with the minimum value. That should be our average distance from the sun. Oh, is that going to be our average? No, the minimum is not necessarily the average. Okay, I take that part back. Um, except here's the thing. This is going to come out to be a really long number. So instead of percent F, I'm going to use percent E so that it will display it in scientific notation so that I don't have to count. Uh, I don't have to count digits or decimal places. I can just read off the the times 10 to the part. So I want to change that for the aphelion as well. And I want to change that for the perihelion as well. Okay, that should put everything to rights there. And then let's check out our console over here. I got that cleared off so we're not distracted. And here we go. Let's see if we get the Earth's orbit. Did I click on everything? I don't think... There we go. Okay. Uh, so let's see. So the energy value doesn't change all that much, right? So that's a good thing. Uh, so let's see. So the minimum is at about 1.4, is at 1.496 times 10 to the 11. So these are in times 10 to the 11. I have these recorded in terms of times 10 to the 10. So let's check it out. The aphelion, oh, I actually got these flipped over here. Oops. Uh, don't mind me, folks. Just, you know, changing the definition of words here. No problem. No problem. So according to this, the aphelion was supposed to be 152.1 times 10 to the 9. This is 1.521 times 10 to the 11, which is the same thing. If you move this decimal place over twice, you'll have a 1.521 times 10 to the 11. Same thing, or, or let's actually do in reverse over here. The perihelion, if I move the decimal place twice, I'll have 147.1 times 10 to the 9. Perihelion 147.1 times 10 to the 9 meters. So we have successfully created a code that uh, correctly calculates the aphelion and perihelion of the Earth's orbit, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, so what we're going to do next time, now that we know this thing is working, we are going to uh, go into some alternative universe stuff and change this term. So as long as angular momentum is conserved, this part is going to stay the same. But the nature of the force might change. So next time we're going to try playing around with the uh, potential energy. That's going to change this part. That's also going to change this other highlighted part in the force. And we'll take a look and see how the aphelion and perihelion change uh, with changes in the nature of the gravitational force. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.